No, it was pretty flat out no at that point. We told them, look, we'll move forward with this based on what you told us, and now we're kind of screwed. I think at that point, we kind of knew where we stood with them. Joshua Davis knows the frustration of being a business owner who's looking for funding. It was around $200,000. Last year, the co-owner of the Gelato Fiasco, based in Brunswick, Maine, needed a cash infusion so that he and business partner Bruno Tropiano could open a second location. We decided that the people believe in us and we believe in us, so let's keep going. Let's keep expanding. Probably the number one question since we opened here in Brunswick was, when are we going to open a location in Portland? Why hadn't we opened there and how quick can you get down there? Neither one ever thought that the search for funding for their five-year-old retail and wholesale business would turn into a fiasco of its own. It took about eight months to find a spot to expand. When the time came to ask for money, Davis and Tropiano intentionally approached a bank with which they had a previous relationship. We had existing loans with them that we'd paid on time, and we have a strong record of sales and cash flow and all the things that banks theoretically use to evaluate you. Bank officials visited the new location, and after reviewing the company's plans, the message appeared to be optimistic. They said, you know, I think we have a deal here. I think, yeah, we should be able to get this done for you. Go ahead, sign the lease, and we'll worry about the paperwork and get the loan started, and we should have the money for you in a couple weeks. Hearing that, Davis and Tropeano quickly put They're pen to paper. Flavors. They were ready to bring flavors like strawberry balsamic and espresso chip to new customers. We went ahead and signed the 10-year lease and put our security deposit down and put our first month's rent down. With renovations getting underway, things seemed to be going well. That is, until the bank appeared to take a step back. Within a matter of weeks, the gelato fiasco's request was denied. It was hard to get an exact reason why, and then at the end they just said, we don't do that type of loan anymore. Unlike the gelato in their cases, the news was tough for Davis and Tropeano to swallow. Frustration with, you know, all right, I did everything you wanted me to do, uh, you know, put the stress on, walk down Main Street, and then you still told me that I was not even second place in the beauty contest. It's just sad. Despite the no from the bank, these business owners didn't stop looking. They were determined to find someone to say yes. The truth is, they didn't have much of a choice. We started making the list again of banks and started making the calls. By then, contractors had started working there, and they were expecting getting paid towards the middle or end of the job, and we didn't know exactly how that was all going to come together. It turns out that pitching the idea to other potential lenders wasn't easy either. Unfortunately, the odds didn't seem to be in the company's favor. You know, it's still a gelato business in Maine is still kind of a far-fetched idea to bankers, apparently. So there was a lot of uh, hesitation to even consider anything. The other challenge was that the gelato fiasco needed money fast. That's something that banks don't do. By the time that we tried to apply to those other places, the fix was already kind of in. You know, the game was kind of rigged against us at that point. So I wasn't too surprised that they said no, just because if you walk into a bank today and expect them to give you an answer next week, it's not quick response. The pair says tensions were never that high, but they got quite the entrepreneurial reality check. It was five or six no's in eight weeks or so during the time where the build-out was going on at the same time. So every day that passed was we were a step closer to opening, but we were also a step closer to really needing the financing. With the deadline looming, these entrepreneurs finally turned to a community group for help. They're a lender of last resort, so you kind of have to exhaust all your options before you can tap into any of the financing they offer. Coastal Enterprises Incorporated had unexpectedly gotten money from the Jobs for USA fund started by Starbucks. CEI already knew of the gelato fiasco, and the group was willing to help. Unlike from the bank, Davis and Tropiano got an answer quickly. About two weeks or so after we had made the call, we had an approval and had that sense of relief that, okay, we know at least how we're going to proceed. Once the funding came through, the result was a renovated storefront, at least 30 flavors available daily and more. Now there's uh, seven employees that we've added in Portland that have full-time jobs with health benefits and vacation. This quest for funding was a challenging one, but the men have learned some valuable lessons. They simply refused to back down, and that's got them ready for the next potential fight. Cash is king. You always got to make sure you have cash, and I see that as my job is making sure. The moral of the story needs to be that you can't give up, 
but then you also have to believe in what you're doing. I mean, you need to have the self-confidence to keep going. You can't just let one setback, you know, end your idea.